Can I start first of all by welcoming you to the annual Methods Fair uh, run by Methods at Manchester. Uh, I'm one of the co-directors, I'm Martin Everett, and sitting somewhere in the audience is my other co-director, Tirani, and also sitting at the back, making sure that a baby continues to survive and thrive, is the pseudo-retired Angela Dale. So uh, we, on behalf of all of us, we welcome you here. Uh, the majority of the day after this introductory section will occur upstairs on the first floor, so when we finished here, can you please make your way up there? There, as you have seen, a variety of workshops and various of you booked into those workshops. Some of them are quite full. If there are full, there's lots of alternatives going on. And I really would encourage you to go to the research-led presentations, which is uh, done by the students, occurring in room 1.001, just upstairs, as there's some really interesting, exciting things going on there. There's one slight change to the programme. At 2 o'clock, unfortunately, our presenter's not able to be here due to personal circumstances. So instead, uh, Tirani is going to show a video uh, on measuring national well-being, some methodological questions, and that will be followed by a discussion. So a nice interactive session there, and I think that's a very good substitution. There are other spaces up there for you to actually interact, and particularly around the posters, which again, I would encourage you to, all to go and look at those. Then at four o'clock, please make sure you come back here. Two big events will be occurring here. First of all, we will announce the winners of the poster competition, and that will be followed by a talk uh, by Nora, uh, which is uh, all about using research in the real world, and that looks to be a very exciting talk. Uh, but it just remains for me to actually get the whole thing going uh, and pass over to James Thompson, the Associate Dean for External Relations, who has a, a few words to say to you about obligations and opportunities of postgraduate research. So, James, thank you. Thank you very much uh, to Martin. Yes, my name's James Thompson. Uh, I'm the new Associate Dean for External Relations uh, here in the Faculty of Humanities. Uh, external Relations for the University are all about those relations the University has beyond our research and our teaching with outside organisations, outside agencies, businesses, and it's particularly framed around the notion of social responsibility. Uh, this University has three objectives. First is excellence in teaching, Second, obviously, for yourselves, excellence in research. But the third, really importantly, is the notion of social responsibility. And that is, in many ways, the value that drives the other two. That all our work should be geared to some forms of social responsibility. Often when people hear about the sort of role that I take, uh, uh, leading on the notion of social responsibility, they assume that we have a particular model of what an academic should look like. And often people divide in their heads two types of academics in this institution. Uh, on one hand, I'm going to go down here, we have academics who belong in one corner, which are known to be the academics who live in an ivory tower over here. And on the other hand, we're, we're assumed that we have these academics who are, the, are the, the public intellectuals. People stereotype this academic over here as the academic who usually has very worn patches on their elbows, usually a man, uh, definitely, if looking around the room, definitely has a beard um, and is probably a bit pallid because they never see the sun and they live up in some sort of isolated room uh, above a tower. And over here, we have the famous public intellectual. This is someone who spends more time in the media studio than in a lab or in the field. This is somebody who probably speaks about things that they're really not an expert to speak about but is prepared to say something about absolutely anything. <laughs> Um, and we all know these people, but actually the point of social responsibility in this university is to deny that this difference exists. It's to hope that this difference does not exist. And we're trying to create a model of an academic that really defies this division. That the best academics and the best researchers and the best postgraduate research students in this university are ones who are clearly experts in their field. Do go away to labs, fields, archives, different places to do high quality research, but also have the confidence to engage externally with different audiences. So in fact, it's not really meant to be this division. And the idea of social responsibility in this institution is more about the idea of circles of responsibility around different practitioners and researchers. The biggest circle of responsibility that we have is a responsibility to our community, nationally and internationally. Uh, for some of you who are funded by the Research Council, that might be a responsibility to a taxpayer. 
but it also might be responsibility to notions of, of, of environmental sustainability, but it might be just to the community in which you engage. There's another responsibility, another circle of responsibility about, about the academic who exists in the middle, which is your responsibility to your participants and your informants. Anyone you engage with whilst conducting your research. And we're really keen to ensure that the engagements we have with participants, informants, people you uh, interview, work with, are done ethically, with respect, where necessary, in confidence. And those people aren't only those people that you might be in a focus group that you're working with, but also are the people who own the objects or live in the places in which you're working. It might be the staff of an archive. We try and have a, a, an idea of responsibility that links to all the people that you might meet in your research. Another circle of responsibility we have is to those people who are part of our field. You are part of a particular disciplinary area, interdisciplinary area. And we have a responsibility to the discipline from which we come. And that might be a responsibility to stretch that discipline, to challenge it, to extend it, to, to undermine some of its given assumptions. So you might be working to, to move and shape your discipline, but also there is a sense that we have a responsibility to it. Another smaller circle of responsibility in this institution is the responsibility we have to our peers and our colleagues. The idea of this um, ivory tower is a complete myth because you are not stuck alone in a tower. There are hundreds of colleagues and peers in this institution. And we all have a responsibility to work with them, to exchange ideas with them, to learn with them, and to support them. One of the things you'll notice in the careers as postgraduate research students is that you, you attend a lot of seminars, and you pro hopefully give a lot of seminars. And one thing in terms of that responsibility is you want your colleagues to attend, and I think it's really important that we show respect and we support each other in, in that process. The final circle of responsibility we have is probably that tiny circle of responsibility which is to ourselves. And often the individual at the heart of a research process can be forgotten. One of the good things about this event is the sense that we're trying to overcome that idea of the isolated researcher. And it's really important the responsibility to yourself is to ensure that you're not isolated, that your well-being is looked after, that you continue to enjoy your research. And hopefully the university tries to set up structures to do that, but also we're keen that people think about your own personal well-being during the course of a research programme. There's a famous um, Ghanaian proverb. I'm looking at the time. I've got, I've got a strong, strict timekeeper down here. There's a Ghanaian proverb that says, a person who rides the donkey does not feel the heat of the ground. A person who rides the donkey does not feel the heat of the ground. Now, I like this proverb because it's a proverb about research methodology. It's a proverb that says, we often spend too much of our time sitting above the world, assuming from that vantage point we will understand it better. But also, another reason why I like this proverb is because it's a proverb about social responsibility. It's a proverb that says researchers have a duty to sometimes get off the back of their donkeys and start to feel a little heat of the situations and the worlds in which we live. And in a sense, we need to be brave enough to get off our donkeys, if you really sit on a donkey. Um, <laughs> and start to work out how we can engage with a range of different audiences. How we can speak to people from the perspectives they have about our research. How we can communicate our research to audiences who would not usually be listening to that area. And how we can perhaps engage with media and a whole range of different communities who ultimately are part of the world that we're living in. So I hope you enjoy your day. Thank you very much to all the Methods people who invited me. If anyone has any bright ideas about issues of social responsibility, public engagement, how university people can engage beyond this institution, please do drop me a line. Thank you very much.